Alright, uh, I think I have my microphone fixed um, in terms of uh, the volume. I either had it too quiet or too loud or too quiet again. I think I've found a good balance in the middle. Uh, chances are I might be wrong again because uh, I thought I had done that last time, but apparently not. Um, but I did compare different videos uh, to this, and this seems like it's in the middle. So I'm going with it, uh, and let's see how that goes. Uh, but anyways, uh, today is going to be a nice, juicy, long commentary. Uh, I was intending on doing this months ago. I had promised people on uh, Twitter I would do this months ago, and never ended up doing it just because by the time I got around to it, I ended up uh, just not caring enough anymore. Uh, the topic had kind of died out, and it wasn't a big issue again, but I uh, started talking politics again on Twitter uh, recently, so here here it is. Um, so basically this video is to explain how I messed up, no that's just how I'm supposed to be about that, how I messed up on here, but I did just mess up uh, one second. Come on, Turgle. That's what I get for spam clicking. Okay, cog. I need a cog. Move that. Okay. Oh, and a 97 agility. Okay. Alright, uh, so yeah, this video is not about agility. This video is about politics uh, and how I arrived at the current political uh, views, uh, philosophical, philosophical views that I hold today um, because what I hold today is very different from what I used to hold um, in the past and uh, so today I am a conservative today I am a Christian um, ten years ago I was about as opposite as you could get from that and uh, so when people kinda talk to me kind of in a demeaning way where they start from the assumption that hey because you hold these views, that must mean you must be a stupid, ignorant guy who's never thought seriously about uh, philosophy or, or, or anything of the sort. And it, like the intellectual arrogance that I hear coming out of their mouths that oh, they, only these people are the enlightened ones and, and only these people have ever thought deeply about these issues before and if I don't agree with their position today that means I must never have done that um, and that's just absurd because um, I've my views were in many ways uh, much closer to them or even much further beyond them and the complete other side of the fence so like today I'm uh, a Christian but I used to be an atheist. I was an atheist for most of my life. Today I have very strong views on uh, morality and, and, and what is right and what is wrong. Ten years ago, I believed nothing was right, nothing was wrong. Anything goes. So, I mean, I've changed drastically. Um, I, I mean, I'm saying ten years ago, I mean, obviously ten years ago, uh, ten years ago I was 16, so yeah. Um, that was then. But I mean, this was actually extending even beyond 10 years ago. This was going back uh, to even my younger uh, teenage years and uh, even preteens. So, um, I, I've, I've changed a lot of the years. Uh, I used to be a hardcore uh, green guy. Uh, very much uh, a primitivist. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that. I was a primitivist. I was an anarchist. Um, and I basically believe that living in the woods um, was the best thing. Basically that uh, humanity, human civilization had destroyed this planet and that um, basically that uh, life would be better if we were all living as stone men again, uh, basically. And this was a uh, belief I had had when I was uh, a kid. Uh, well, not even a kid, just, uh, yeah, I, I guess I was still a kid, um, but, I mean, just, all of these were, um, they're, they're philosophies I reject today, and I reject very strong, I'm very anti-green today, um, I used to be an anarchist, I am very much in favor of, uh, certain authorities, uh, systems, um, hierarchies, um, 
So uh, just just my entire outlook has changed as I've kind of grown up a bit. Um, so I I just wanted to kind of put put out how I evolved um, along these uh, different things and uh, different beliefs. Uh, like obviously I mentioned same sex marriage, uh, and that seems to be the biggest one that that gets people these days. Uh, like when I talk about that, because everybody jumps on my throat on Twitter. Um, everybody's jumping down my throat on Twitter. Anytime I even post anything, everybody's got to bring up the whole same-sex marriage thing because I talked about this uh, like a few months ago, and now I, that's all people want to bring up when I post on Twitter. Um, and so I, w- I want to explain how that kind of came up because I wasn't. I used to be uh, very permissive in my views on sexuality. Um, once upon a time, very very permissive because uh, actually anything goes, right? Uh, so. It's just, it's just I've changed. Uh, I used to be very anti-authoritarian as well. I used to, uh, used to hate just discipline. The whole concept of discipline, responsibility, duty. Um, just I, I used to hate all that. But I mean, I also used to be a, a teenager, going through my whole teenage rebellious uh, stage, and I think a lot of people just kind of get this emotional hatred for that, and I just went the wrong way on Birdhaven. Uh, ignore that. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so I grew up out of that, and uh, I think a lot of people are attracted to philosophies such as libertarianism um, because it kind of feeds into their already emotional need uh, to be rebellious. Um, and here's a philosophy that's uh, they're seeing and they're saying, hey, I don't, it's given basically excuses uh, for behaviors they already want to engage in, is basically what it kind of comes down to. Um, and so it's attractive to them. Um, so anyways, uh, this is just, what I just stated so far is basically just a overview of kind of where I was, and I'd like to kind of uh, explain how I got there um, to each of these positions. Um, so yeah, let's save this before I ruin that. All right, so I saved that v- clip out. Um, so I'm gonna start out from uh, when I was a kid. So I was raised Catholic originally, uh, and so that was kind of my initial experience, understanding of what I thought was Christianity. And in third grade, I basically uh, stopped believing in a whole bunch of things. Uh, so like Santa Claus and uh, stopped believing that was slowly and that maybe I don't know um, and also God um, it just kind of lumped in basically all these uh, mythical things from my childhood and I was like okay none of them are real I haven't seen any of them uh, so it must not be real and that was basically my initial thing and so I was a young little atheist of the family um, and so we would go to like family reunions and stuff and uh, I would be there arguing with my uh, my aunts and uncles, and uh, my mom didn't like that. But um, <coughs> so I mean, which is kind of maybe funny to uh, think about with uh, me as I am today. Um, and then uh, about when I was, I think I was in seventh grade, uh, and I was I think I was twelve, seventh grade and twelve, if I'm remembering correctly, I uh, kind of had a realization that, uh, and and this was just kind of a, a simple, at, at the time, it was simple, but it was, it was the earliest um, I had of this, which was that if God's not real, then morality based on the Ten Commandments and such uh, is also not real. Um, and at that time, um, I was thinking, okay, what what are some of the basis of morality? And obviously, you have kind of as God treats it, or you have a society uh, as treats it as right and wrong. What is right and wrong is what some group of people uh, determine is right and wrong. But what if there's disagreements? Uh, what if there's um, different communities that? Uh, think of something else as right and wrong uh, than other communities. What if I think something's right and wrong and it, it, that disagrees with what some other group of people think and there's an, um, not always a consensus on this and where does that come from and as I got older a bit I, I kind of got more elaborate 
um, arguments for this um, would there uh, if you were born and raised in um, the Middle East uh, you would believe in uh, morality as kind of in that culture there you would believe in the religion <coughs> that exists in that culture there and uh, you would basically live your your life according to how you were raised over there and then if you were raised over here you're much more likely uh, to have very different morals uh, and so when you have all of these different ones um, how do you determine what is the correct one um, how do you determine that uh, all of these biases that you have or based on uh, how you were raised and, and where you grew up how does that give it any legitimacy and so basically my conclusion at the time was it doesn't and no morality could be justified uh, no morality uh, could could be a true real correct one and I basically rejected all morality as a result I said okay well since there's no basis for right and wrong good and evil and it just happens to be wherever you live or whoever ends up winning a war and determining right and wrong um, or something like that uh, political movement or, or cultural movement something then that ends up being what uh, people think of as right and wrong but there's no actual right and wrong and so this would uh, dominate a lot of my thinking um, for a good chunk of my life uh, and so anything goes in, um, so this that means when um, any type of sexual behavior is acceptable, morally acceptable. Any type of crime is morally acceptable. At least that was my, my view at the time. Uh, so murders is basically if you can get away with it. Or, I mean, you still, it's not that you're heartless or, or you don't have feelings. You still have feelings. But it was that there's no, my belief was that there was no actual, um, just philosophical morality. Uh, you can say this is morally wrong. You can say, oh, it's, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel right. But just because something doesn't feel good for you doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Because uh, feelings themselves are not a basis for morality. Um, and and so um, even and I, and, I, and I, I'm, I'm going to go into kind of more detail here. But like even um, something like someone saying Hitler is the most evil man in history that would actually tick me off because people were making a, a strong moral judgment there not that I had any love for Hitler or anything like that but just because people were making such strong statements and so um, I, that was basically my mindset from like 12 until probably sometime in my uh, my early 20s or something um, so that last that, that dominated a big chunk of my life there um, and then I had uh, another kind of big philosophy kind of develop um, when I was, uh, let's see, I'm trying to remember, I think 8th grade, uh, about 13 or so, I, uh, yeah, I think about that age, I basically had this uh, other philosophy kind of develop in parallel. So. The no morality thing is called basically nihilism, uh, moral nihilism, uh, Nietzsche and all that stuff. Uh, and uh, David Hume is also another one with the is art problem. Uh, that was a big thing. So that was all nihilism. But in adjacent to this, in parallel to this, I had another philosophy uh, which was called primitivism or anarcho primitivism. Uh, so it was a form of green anarchy um, which basically. As I said before, I uh, believe that human civilization was an evil thing, that modern industrial technology was an evil thing, that uh, we should all be hunter-gatherers again. Uh, or rather at the time, um, the belief was that uh, either the peak oil would destroy civilization or something like that. I don't know. It was uh, basically that 98% of humanity probably had to die out, though, because it couldn't be supported by uh, uh, just hunter-gatherer lifestyle. But um, all of that kind of developed just from an initial naive childish approach uh, that I probably got from reading all these fantasy books um, but I had this uh, belief that kind of living in a state of nature uh, a wild nature um, was somehow superior 
or easier than modern civilized life. And I had this 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 fantasy in my head, um, just maybe because the books made it seem easier than it was in reality. I don't know, but I had this easy that just living in the wild was better than um, the life we had, and it was, it was it was even like subtle things like um, uh, like showering or um, just cleaning up or uh, brushing teeth or, or anything like that. Even just I, actually I mentioned hygiene right here, but um, clothes. Uh, like I was thinking, well, animals can uh, wear clothes. So why can't I mean animals don't wear clothes? They don't do all these other things. Yet they seem to get by just fine. At least that's what I thought. I thought they had perfectly fine lives, uh, and then they do all these things that civiliz civilized humans do. And I was thinking, well, there's a uh, crap. Pick care. I got to teleport. Dang. I think it was AFK. All right. Um. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna pause this one more. Yeah, so I think that kind of PK kind of scared me, so I went and banked a little bit. Um, I think it was just training, uh, partially because of my, uh, I don't know, I think my video might have obviously advertised that place a little bit, uh, I don't know. But anyways, going back to what I was talking about, um, so I had this whole idea of uh, kind of like nature, wild nature and stuff being superior to, to this. It only started out as kind of a kid thing, it was only like uh, just very little subtle things probably just reading all these books and then I the biggest problem is that I started looking for other people with similar ideas I hated the authority and, and all that and I found this kind of blend of um of anarchism and ah uh, here shit 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 be care no you do not hit me you do not hit me no 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 you don't no you don't no, 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 See if I can add him. Nope. Okay. Let me eat up. I could probably hop worlds. Okay. He moved a little bit. Okay. Well, I guess you guys just. <laughs> Alright. Well, that was not good. Alright. But uh, he does not have his private chat on. So. What's his name? Okay. Yeah. Delete that. Alright. Uh. <sighs> Uh, I'm probably gonna have to hop worlds. So, oh, my private is on though. Let's not have that on. Um, I'm not completely interrupted this video. <laughs> this video is not supposed to be about me getting PK'd or me doing agility. It's supposed to be about uh, this story of my life. Um, uh, let me hop, and I'll be right back. Okay, well, I keep getting distracted, but I'm back. So, yeah, basically, I was uh, looking up um, people with similar ideas, and I found the whole anarcho primitivism um, philosophy. And then I ended up interacting with these people and being involved with these people online. And I started changing my own lifestyle uh, to kind of match this whole philosophy I had now. And um, basically, my interacting with them. Uh, I believe is uh, what kind of made it worse. I uh, ended up adopting a lot of their ideas and ended up growing much further beyond what my original ideas had been. And it, I, I basically uh, I got brainwashed. It's basically what it comes down to. I got brainwashed, and uh, and so my original ideas had simply been just a few questions about um, why do why do we do these things while wild animals or even pets don't. And um, and so it, that's all it started out as. It was a very simple, innocent thing. And then I ballooned into this whole big philosophy that wild nature is better. Um, and then I had to deal with, during my 16s, this whole conflict. Well, why do I believe that this is better? Why do I believe that uh, it's... Why am I taking the viewpoint that, hey, it's morally inferior or morally worse? 
that um, to use modern technology to to have modern civilization that um, all of these uh, things that have been brainwashed uh, into believing uh, that um, all discipline was was bad, all all hierarchy was bad. I was a very disobedient kid, uh, good in trouble and stuff. But uh, and I I had all these things like. Well, this is in conflict with what I had also determined with nihilism, and that none of this was um, there was no right or wrong, and yet I had these feelings, or or so I tried to I tried to come up with reasons to justify them, or to try to merge the whole nihilism side, that the the anti morality side, with the the greed side, the environmentalist side, and um, my my rationale was that well animals don't have morality or whatnot something like that but they're innocent just like uh, newborn babies are innocent before they're reprogrammed by society and uh, and so that was kind of how I tried to rationalize it but I mean it was still kind of weak and um, I ended up uh, in the end rejecting the whole green primitivist philosophy when because I get po I used to get poison ivy really really badly every summer, um, and so like the last time this happened, uh, it w it was just really bad. It was getting in my eyes, and I was basically in immense pain. And uh, it was, I mean, it, it's a reality is a uh, uh, what's the word? Um, reality teaches you lessons. Um, it, it's hard lessons. And the hard lesson I learned was that it doesn't matter how much I wished to, I would not um, be able to live that lifestyle that I had wanted. Because um, basically my whole goal was I was going, I had basically given up on school, I had given up on everything in life, um, having, having a career and doing anything like that. So all I wanted to do is I wanted to find some cave and live out of that cave in the woods somewhere and, and that was it. That was that was the height of my, my life goals and so I had dropped out of school, I had I'd, I'd done all sorts of uh, things and um, I didn't want to work. Um, and that was, that was my thing and I also had this really bad concept of how much money could actually be made working and I thought just being successful was uh, something that was out of reach, it was just based on luck. Um, and a lot of the arguments um, I, that I hear today on the left uh, that um, I used to be a part of, I used to be deep, deep in that. And um, it's, it's, it's just, I, you, you get a whole different perspective when you're on the other side. And you can actually see how brainwashed you were uh, when you're... In, actually outside of it. I don't know. And, and it's given me a new perspective as, as I've gotten older. Um, but, uh, I, I keep jumping around. Um, so basically I ended up rejecting it, uh, par partially because the whole point and everything, and it was just not, uh, not reality that I can live with. And then I had some other things in my life. So I had dropped out of school a little bit after that. Um, even if I had decided to start progressing and doing work in school, um, I wouldn't have graduated uh, in any reasonable amount of time. So basically, when I this whole philosophy kind of came to a head, so I had, by this time, so I was 16, um, and 15 even, yeah, 15, 15, 16, and so I had long hair, and I had basically stopped doing all schoolwork because I had no life goals, right? So I, I had stopped doing all schoolwork, and uh, I mean, there was no point in doing it, and so like. Freshman year, halfway through freshman year, wasn't doing anything, and so this made me stay back, and then stayed back again, and um, kind of got that t t into tenth grade by just uh, just happenstance, whatever. Um, I was a really smart kid, uh, like I was really arrogant about it too, like um, just middle school and um, I'm jumping around again, but yeah, middle school I was a very very arrogant kid. I uh, I was always top of my class, and I was, I was very, um, I was always just very proud of that, and I stopped caring in, in high school. I still thought I was smarter than everybody else, but I stopped caring about doing any work, uh, and, uh, <coughs> yeah, so basically I had no chance of graduating high school, so I just dropped out, um, 
I did end up working and getting my GED, working on getting my GED. Um, I had long, greasy hair at that time, because uh, wild animal type of philosophy. So I was homeless at one point and, uh, when I was 17, because my parents basically kicked me out because I wasn't doing anything with my life. And then uh, my mom eventually agreed to take me in if I cut my hair and I got a job. And uh, so I finally did. Um, the job didn't really pay well, um, but I did do um, I did do a, a few hours, and I eventually lost that job. But uh, this was back in 2008, um, and I was 17. I had dropped out of high school by this time, and I was over with my mother. And I decided that I would uh, basically spend my free time playing RuneScape. Uh, I had a ton of free time, and I had just I uh, got a 99 agility, and I wanted to get my first 200 agility, and RuneScape ended up being the escape, uh, you could say, from all the philosophical ideas, philosophical ideas that had basically messed me up, um, and I didn't want to think about any more philosophy, I just wanted to kind of put that behind me, um, I'm and so that's kind of where RuneScape kind of came into it. Um, I I'm annoyed at myself. Like I gotta like make notes or something because I I'm jumping around and this is getting really confusing for people. Um, like I, I feel like starting over. Ah <laughs> uh, shit. Um, yeah. So another thing I another kind of segment of my philosophy that I kind of neglected to mention was kind of like extreme skepticism so I was very much into reading um, so this is kind of back when I'm 16 still I was very much into reading uh, about uh, meta ethics and epistemology so epistemology is the philosophical theory of the study of knowledge how do we know things and so I basically reinforce a lot of my atheism uh, or, or agnosticism at this point and uh, nihilism and all this uh, and I was very much um, an extreme skeptic so you cannot know anything with certainty and I'm still very much a skeptic uh, of many things uh, to this day I'm very much very very much a skeptic uh, and a lot of these ideas have kind of still influenced uh, me today. So I want to make that clear. But um, reason and using rationality to determine truth um, requires a lot of um, a lot of faith in the human capability to reason logically, to know that when they're actually being logical, to know when they're not making mistakes, to know that the premises they're building this, any argument off of is actually valid and sound in the first place. Um, and there's a lot of this that simply is not really reliable, yet we are very cocky in how intelligent we think we are, and so we think what we say is actually reliable. Um, and so th this was a, a big thing that really kind of made me reject, uh, kind of reason. Just, um, you have so much disagreement, um, on, on so many topics, but especially within philosophy. You have huge amounts of disagreements within various different phil philosophical things, political things, cultural, religious, moral, everything. There's huge amounts of disagreement. Um, and in a way, you could say that, uh, reason is is, is limited. Um, everybody thinks that they're the one being rational and everybody else is being irrational. And I ended up just losing a whole lot of faith and, and, and just pure reason alone uh, doing it. Basically coming up with the truth and I lost a lot of faith in philosophy because all philosophy had done was cause me misery. Um, and it hasn't really caused me um, I hadn't really come up with any of the truths um, that I was looking for, that I was seeking. And so I ended up very much anti-philosophy. And that it helped also kind of drive my whole uh, RuneScape stuff. Just RuneScape as a distraction. And uh, so... My life for a while was just try to live as cheaply as possible. I didn't want to work. Uh, 
I still didn't want to work. Um, and RuneScape ended up changing a lot of things for me because it developed for me a kind of a work ethic. Um, it developed for me some pride in achievements and earning things and um, even playing legitimately uh, and honorably and all that stuff. That started kind of coming to me as part of my whole RuneScape um, kind of experience. And so Carissa, uh, Squish, person I was, uh, RuneScape player who has Squish Agility, who I was, uh, living with for about six years in Oregon, um, they, she was saying that she didn't believe anymore that I rejected morality. And that kind of hit home to me. Uh, I was like, yes I do. And then she was like, well look at how you play on RuneScape. And so from a philosophical logical standpoint, I still reject immorality. Uh, and, but from an actual um, practical standpoint, how I live my life standpoint, I simply just, I just stopped caring. I just stopped caring about philosophy. I just didn't want to think about it anymore. I just want to forget about it and it doesn't matter if it's true or not I just wanted to live my life um, play the game uh, I just wanted to play it um, so I mean there was no rational thing behind that I just uh, I had pride in my achievements and I didn't want them being devalued and that's basically it and let's see what else did I talk about so that was now leaking in my early 20s um, but basically, my, my whole my whole philosophy on life had basically caused me to be a bum who wasn't doing anything with his life and didn't have any life goals and I still had problems. Um, so in my early twenties, I started having. Um, a very strong emotional desire uh, to basically become a father. Just kind of don't know why, just I did. And I also looked at my life and I saw I was in no position to be a father. I, I just simply was not someone who could do that. Uh, not could do that, but um, I, ha I had no license to drive. I had no um, no job, I had no way to support them, I could barely support myself, and I, I just wasn't the man, I wasn't a man that could be a father. Um, so, I knew I needed to change, um, so I had to basically work on my license. I couldn't get my license uh, for a while. I couldn't drive because you needed glasses, and I hated the whole concept of glasses uh, for a long time. I didn't want to wear glasses. Uh, part of it just being, hey, try to be more natural, right? So you don't need to use the glasses because uh, that's that's not natural, right? Uh, same thing. It was a long time ago. Like uh, I had braces at one point, and. Uh, I, like an idiot, uh, I didn't want the braces, and so I, I was kind of pressured into having them. Uh, my mom brought me to uh, the orthodontist and, and slapped me on them, and uh, about a month later, I, I yanked them off with the pliers, so, I mean, this was when I was 16. Probably should have kept them on, but um, it can't change the past. Um, yeah, one more thing uh, before I go back to the future, or the past, future past, I don't know. Um, so, also when I was uh, kind of in the, the whole green anarchy, primitivist mindset, um, I did, I rejected drugs. I, a lot of, hip, like I was very much hippie mindset, very, very hippie in terms of how I looked and dressed and attitude and everything, but I was very anti-drugs um, in terms of, um, so a lot of people, when they become the whole hippie thing, they ended up uh, embracing pot and just because, hey, marijuana, this is a, a very, uh, uh, it's a plant, it's nature, it's natural, but my, and, and so they're like natural medicine, herbal medicine is, is good. That's the that's whole mindset of, of that, of, of a lot of kind of hippie naturalist type of people. 
but my whole mindset was taking any substance was unnatural, uh, planned or otherwise, because you're using this and you're altering your natural brain's uh, chemistry, you're altering just your body, um, and that in itself is not natural. And uh, that was based on my reasoning for that. Um, I forgot to mention that earlier, just like a lot of things. I like writing things down when I'm explaining all this, because if I explain the story just speech, I'm hopping around, whereas if I write it down, I can just, oh, I edit it above, and so, I don't know. Um, so back to my 20s, uh, wanting kids, uh, I basically changed, I eventually, I mean, it took time, but uh, I eventually uh, started uh, um, doing the, the things I needed, got glasses, got a car, got um, all the things I needed for that. I needed a job, I needed a career, and so I was working on a college uh, degree that would make me a good amount of money. Um, I basically took a lot of my RuneScape mindset, which is, alright, well what do I do on RuneScape when I need cash? RuneCrafting. You get 91 RuneCrafting, you invest in 91 RuneCrafting, so you might do lavas or something to 91, and then you do double natures. And so what I needed to do in the real world was the exact same thing. I needed to invest in something that would make uh, a lot of money. Um, something that was in limited supply because too few people would want to bother with it, but in high enough demand. Um, and so I basically latched on to uh, software development, um, specifically aiming, if I could, towards kind of work on kind of advanced uh, game engine rendering technologies. Uh, that was kind of my passion and I got into it and I'm happy I got into that. Um, another thing that kind of changed me a lot was uh, this was during the whole 2011-2012 um, Ron Paul campaign uh, libertarianism. So I briefly got into that. Uh, I was in that for maybe a, a year or so. Um, and Maybe longer, I don't know. Um, biggest thing I got out of that was economics. I learned a whole lot of things about economics that forever turned me away from socialism or anything like that. Um, just learning how the free market works, learning Austrian economics in particular, um, Austrian school. Uh, I Google that if you're not familiar with it. Um, but that forever changed my perspective on the world. Um, but I ended up, uh, over time, uh, coming to disagreements with uh, libertarians because they, uh, a lot of their kind of social views are based on um, the non-aggression principle, uh, which is something they just kind of made up out of new, uh, out of thin air as an axiom, and then they said, okay, well, this axiom, this non-aggression principle, which basically says it is immoral to initiate. Uh, coercion of force against uh, another party and then they derive all morality from this but they made this up out of thin air and I had just gotten out of um, I had just spent most of my life being critical of people just kind of coming up with these moralities and I didn't like that he was just inventing a morality out of thin air um, not he I'm just saying just the whole philosophy they were basically inventing this uh, and it was kind of utopian in nature, and it was very uh, disappointing. Um, and I didn't didn't want to base any of my philosophy on it, because um, hey, I, I mean, I'm rejecting morality. I, I reject morality my entire life, almost uh, f at least from a, a young enough age. And um, I had enough arguments against it that, that this whole libertarian non-aggression principle was going to uh, take hold with me. And I mean. It, what made it even worse is that it's, it wasn't even something accepted uh, by even a significant number of people, like in terms of like society at large. That was a funny thing. It was like they just made it up. Um, whereas if you think about like a, a typical parent, and a parent has to use force against a child for their own good. Um, say the child runs out into the street to get a ball, and uh, a parent takes. Uh, runs out and picks up the child before they can do that uh, for their own good while well, they're initiating force yet libertarian would say no the parent was being immoral in this case so the kid's supposed to get hit by 
uh, a bus or, or a car or something? No. So, uh, I don't, just, just even basic things. So even, even in common society, it just it didn't even make sense. Um, what common society uh, in maybe America or something would think of um, as morally acceptable. So, um, I, I, just, I just found the whole thing laughable. Um, but uh, I ended up, uh, I ended up eventually finding a way to have morality, or to embrace morality, or at least a system of morality. Um, so as part of my whole libertarian thing, I ended up kind of viewing favorably, like, um, 19th century America, Britain, uh, the whole Victorian era. Um, I had a very favorable t um, opinion of that time in the world. That's when a lot of uh, prosperity uh, kind of developed. Um, that's before kind of like 1800, everything, all kind of, everywhere in the world was very poor. Every, I mean, the natural state of humanity is extreme poverty. And nothing had changed uh, for almost all the human history. Nothing had ever changed until 1800. In a handful of uh, countries in the world, basically Anglo countries, um, and for a time the Dutch and and, and Scandinavia and, and that Northern Europe section, and I noticed this pattern. So I was in a group, of, a libertarian group in college, and I'm debating um, some some fellow people there, and I ended up coming up with an argument that kind of shaped, uh, just kind of on the spot, and it kind of, we just changed a lot of my whole philosophy on, on the world and life in general. Um, and it was basically centered around why do, why do certain communities, when they come to America and they live under our laws, even if they lived under um, perfect libertarian laws, or whether they lived out there, at least more free market laws than the countries they came from. Why, when they still come here and they enjoy the same laws we do, do they face the same relative levels of, of poverty that they had when they came uh, from wherever they came? So what I mean by this is when you look at, um, say, uh, Latino um, immigrants from Latin America, they come to America, and they're still largely poor. And now the liberal would say, oh, that's just because they're uh, the systemic racism and, and they're basically uh, a society keeps them impoverished and, and they have all these uh, systemic problems against them, targeting them. It's basically, they just blame racism. I, ju I just don't see that as, as reality in this country. I just don't see that. We're not holding them down. White people are not holding them down and exploiting them. That's that's just silly. Um, <coughs> but at the same time, um, the libertarian doesn't really have an argument for this, and they don't really um, have anything for this. And when you actually look at the world in general, you actually see the world, and you're like, well, you can take people of um, any any race. They come to America. Uh, I mean, you can have people. Of um, like, see, I'm, I myself, uh, am Italian for the most part, uh, a little bit Irish and um, Arabic. So I mean, none of those are particularly, I mean, very successful um, demographics. Um, but in America, you kind of come here and you can assimilate, and so a lot of what my, my family has done is they've assimilated into America, so whatever original ethnicity they came from, they kind of rejected kind of that culture, they don't embrace that anymore, or, I mean, maybe some some of my extended family members might more than I do, I don't know, but um, I grew up in Rhode Island, um, but I'm cutting in on a tangent here. Um, my point is, um, you have all of these Anglo countries, you have Great Britain, America, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. You have all of these Anglo countries. Uh, you can say that these are countries where people speak English, they embrace an English culture, even if they weren't racially um, from England. Um, this is just immigrants from all over the place. But you have these people that all embrace a certain way of life. Culture is just a um, a way of life is basically what culture is. And so they embrace a lifestyle, a way of life, and a way of thinking, uh, 
in some sense certain philosophies they, they embrace and uh, then you have people in um, kind of Latin America these all kind of came from Spain and Portugal where they embrace different cultures different ways of life different philosophies different ways of thinking organized society um, human institutions etc and so when you just do a hard comparison between the Anglo world and the Latin world you see huge disparities um, and you see that the Anglo world is much more successful much more um, well off prosperous um, crime free than these other societies and that's kind of the idea I latched on to um, and so you have other uh, you have other examples here too uh, so you have Catholic Southern Europe contrasted with Protestant Northern Europe you have the East, East Asian uh, four tigers um, contrasted with the ones on the mainland uh, so these the targets more like on the islands in South Korea and all that um, and you contrast that with the uh, more impoverished areas on the mainland um, China and down south and Southeast Asia and um, see why what were the differences there um, and when you have Asians that come to America they tend to be very successful but when you have Hispanics that come to America, they tend to not be. Um, and then you look at Africa, and you look at Africa itself is very uh, not successful. And then you look at probably the poorest continent. Uh, and then you look at uh, Africans within America, and they're not as successful. And so I ended up coming to the conclusion that just having the right laws alone were not enough. You had to have the right culture and the right laws. So I determined, okay, Asians better off in America because um, they had a culture that worked. But um, in many of these Asian countries, the laws didn't work. Um, and so that kind of was the bottleneck. And then... Um, in terms of Africa, the, the traditional um, kind of culture and politics and all that, just neither works. Um, and then when you bring that to America, it also doesn't work. Now, a lot of people, um, a lot of people see these uh, disparities um, and they uh, automatically jump to the conclusion um, that, oh, maybe race is a problem or something like that, that these are genetic genetically caused and I reject that position um, so a lot of um, I'm talking about like white supremacists and uh, or nationalists rather um, and they they think that okay you're racially or, or genetically um, that this may be a genetic IQ thing that this predetermines how successful you'll be in life and how much you'll you'll engage in crime and, and whatnot and they believe that culture and race are inseparable and I reject this um, because I mean I've seen way too many examples in my life of this, myself included, where you can take people of any racial background, and as long as they assimilate into a certain culture enough, uh, that they can be just as successful, just as um, failed as any other culture, any other individual in that um, society that embraces those views and, and lifestyle. Um, my old views had caused me to be a homeless bum, and when I changed my views. I became very much successful, and uh, so culture, culture, and, and and values, values in particular, uh, very very important. And libertarians really didn't kind of have any kind of argument for this or or talk about it at all. Period. Um, <coughs> and so basically, I ended up um, embracing the whole Protestant. Um, Protestant culture, Protestantism uh, changed a lot of things in um, the world, and it basically created a modern world. And I, I, I recognize this that hey, all the Protestant countries ended ended up being the most successful ones. Why is this? Why? Why? What did Catholicism do to keep it down? And I didn't really know anything about 
the detail the, the differences between two. I mean, I just I started learning this over time. Um, but I ended up uh, adopting for myself the kind of uh, what I viewed was when the world kind of shot off and everything started booming in in the world and 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 becoming prosperous. I I basically said, okay, of all of the moral platforms out there, all the moral platters out there, which one works the most? Um, whereas before I was saying you couldn't judge between what is the I I thought you couldn't judge that oh this Arab one was maybe uh, this Muslim one was superior to this Christian one or, or something like that. You couldn't judge any differences. I thought you couldn't judge any differences. Um, but then now that, hey, you can actually see the outcomes of different ways of living a life, and then all you got to do is you pick the one that works best. So I, I determined, okay, well, of all the ones in the world, I determined that 19th century Victorian morality, lifestyle, etc., values worked best, and that had the best outcome of any system in the world and I I chose this and I decided hey I'm just gonna go have faith that because of the outcomes that I've seen of all of these different systems I'm gonna have faith that I don't I may not know why it works or how it works or or, or whatnot but I, I have I've seen the outcome therefore I have faith that it does work um, and so kind of like a black box setting. It, you can see the, the 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 outcome. You can see the input, but you can't see the workings of it. And so I'm just gonna adopt the entire moral platter for myself. I wasn't a Christian, but I decided I was just gonna adopt the entire moral platter of kind of 19th century Victorian morality and culture, and that was going to be um, what I, I was gonna embrace and. Um, after coming to that conclusion, I had spent my, most of my life being very anti-Christian. Uh, I started being at least a little bit more um, not as hateful. I was not as hateful towards Christianity after that. And I uh, ended up becoming conservative, um, but I still wasn't a Christian. And I, I, I left the whole libertarian um, region. And uh, then I ended up... Uh, Let's see, I ended up, so I, I wanted to wait until marriage, or at least wait until an engagement, um, that was my big thing, yeah, wait until an engagement um, for sex, I uh, wanted to, I wanted kids, but I didn't want my kids to grow up in uh, a home that would basically be uh, kind of like the home I grew up in, uh, so basically my parents split up and um, they were divorced uh, most of my life. They hated each other, uh, and I didn't want my kids growing up like that. I wanted my kids growing up with the mom and the dad together, and um, basically, I wanted that family life, and I still want that family life. And um, stop because I adopted this more platter. Uh, I didn't, abortion was no longer acceptable, um, and. So if if abortion is not acceptable, and if I want my kids to rate to kind of be raised in a, a f basically a, a nuclear family, a traditional nuclear family, uh, traditional values there, um, if I wanted that for my my life, that means I couldn't be sexually promiscuous. It means I had to um, not take any chances, not have any risks um, that could potentially get a woman pregnant um, that I didn't want to get pregnant with. Um, so if I'm going to have sex with someone, it's got to be because I'm going, uh, I see them as a mother and that they're going to be willing to be with me for the rest of my life. And so that obviously changes a lot of uh, living my life uh, <laughs> and uh, changed a lot of things. And I ended up dating somebody who, uh, at least briefly, uh, who claimed that she wanted uh, to wait until marriage, and, and she, she said she was a, a Christian. Um, and then within a week, she's taken off her clothes, and I'm like, okay, well, <laughs> you obviously were not very serious about that. Um, so, I don't know, I ended up breaking up with her for other reasons uh, a little after that, but... Uh, it was just, 
as part of that, uh, one of the dates we went on, or, or basically she wanted someone to go to church with her, and so I, for the, this was a, my very first time in a non-Catholic church, a, a Protestant church, and so I went there, it was basically uh, just a lot of balloons and kid, very, very kid friendly. I was just very surprised by it. I was like, oh, okay. And then the sermon was just basically about, uh, actually, it really wasn't much about the Bible. It was just about uh, some recent wins on that kind of come to town, and they just kind of talked about kind of community and things like that. And it's like, oh, okay. Well, well, so that was my one time in that church, and uh, never went back to that particular church. But that was my very first time not in a Catholic uh, mass or anything like that, um, in, actually in a church. and um, Then, uh, probably, I don't know, a couple months went by, and a friend I had made in that libertarian group, uh, he was actually the president of the group, um, he invited me to his church, and uh, I was like, I just want to get out of the house and do something, so... So sure, I'll, I'll come along, tag along, and uh, kind of learn it a little bit. And so, over about a year and a half, uh, I mean, I stopped going sometimes. I was a little annoyed at maybe some of the things. Uh, basically, anything criticizing Pride because Pride was such a big part of my uh, my agility stuff, you know. <laughs> um, I mean, certain things would kind of tick me off. Uh, but uh, I, w I was very resistant, but I did learn over time a lot of things about Christianity that I simply did not know. I learned a lot about the differences between Protestantism and, and Catholicism that I also had not known. And um, it was just, it, it changed a lot. Um, and, but I was, still an, I was still an atheist, or agnostic at least. I was, I, I gotta say agnostic, because I I was not uh, saying with any certainty that there was no God or creator. I was just saying that, uh, let's see, what was I saying? I was saying that even if there was a creator, even if I accepted that there was a creator, um, even likely, likely that there was a creator, uh, I still had no reason to believe that it was the creator as described in the Bible. Um, is basically what my thinking at the time was. And eventually that evolved. Um, and I mean, I'm not going to go into all the uh, the things that changed my opinion on that, but I eventually came to the conclusion that um, it was likely that uh, that God and Christianity and, and Jesus and all of that um, was true. And there's a lot of uh, arguments behind that. Uh, I read a book called uh, The Case for Christ by uh, Lee Strobel, and that kind of helped uh, answer some of my final questions. Um, but basically, I'd been attending church for a year and a half, and then I eventually uh, des decided I, I believed, and then I got baptized and all that. And that was about uh, two years ago. So, um, so I'd been a Christian uh, for about two years now. Um, but I had adopted and I had embraced um, the whole morality uh, behind, at least what I had known of it at the time, at least my conception of it at the time. I, I embraced that since probably like, uh, what was it, 2014, uh, three years, um, early 2014, so three and a half years actually. And uh, let's see. Um, I guess this is going on for over an hour now. Um, I was very involved in the Ted Cruz campaign. Uh, I had uh, very much supportive, supportive of him. Um, so a lot of people who are not aware, um, Ted Cruz is actually very much uh, fiscally conservative to the almost about the same point as uh, any libertarian is um, in terms of uh, embracing the free market. I think he's maybe a little weaker on the Fed uh, instead of like wanting to end the Fed. I think he favors just having the Fed uh, um, stabilize pricing uh, instead of eliminating the Fed. But um, I mean, he, he's 
I, I still agree with libertarians on economics, so I'm, I'm very much on uh, laissez-faire, free market economics, I'm all for free trade, and Ted Cruz is, he's just very uh, kind of subtle about the way he expresses it, um, and, but on social policy and on fiscal, I mean not fiscal, foreign policy, so social and foreign policy, I am um, socially conservative as opposed to the libertarian, which is socially liberal on such issues. Um, so I'm, I'm a full conservative all around the board on all major issues. And uh, you know, probably say I'm a little bit to the right of Ted Cruz even. Um, but he's by far the best candidate. I donated uh, over a couple hundred bucks to him during his campaign. Um, I still attend Tea Party events. Uh, I was actually elected as a precinct committee person when I was in Oregon. Uh, I'm now in Texas. I actually got to go see Ted Cruz, uh, shook his hand, and took a picture with him and listened to his speech in person. Uh, I was just here a few days ago, so that was fun. Um, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy where I am in Texas. I, I was in Oregon. Oregon's a very hippie state, very... Uh, very much in the whole marijuana thing, I am very much anti-marijuana. I'm probably like the one of the only young people my age, <laughs> just just obviously young people my age, yeah. So I'm 26. Um, I'm probably one of the only people my age that's very strongly opposed to it. Um, but I am very strongly opposed to it. I've always been. Um, and uh, I respect authority. I respect this plan. I, I respect the men in blue. Uh, and yeah, hopefully I'll be a father someday. Raise those little jebrams. Um, but I, I feel like I was born in the wrong generation. Um, obviously, I love the technology, but I, I, and my work is in this technology. But um, my attitude, uh, the way I dress, uh, I try to dress more manly than uh, maybe a lot of these uh, <laughs> runescapers try to dress. Um, and and I'm just a very old fashioned type of guy now. Uh, I listen to a lot of country music too. Uh my father listens to country. Uh so maybe I like that a bit. Um I like the whole pull your boots pull yourself up by your bootstraps type of mentality. Um I very much oppose uh anything ghetto. Um the whole ghetto culture because I believe that is what leads to so much poverty and crime in America, uh, or elsewhere around the world, I guess you can say, but, um, with, within Hispanic and black communities, I think you take anyone of any race and you raise them in, uh, a wealthy, successful ne suburban neighborhood, and I think they will be just as wealthy and successful as anyone else raised with those values. Um, I mean, a lot of it is just the biggest reason you see certain demographic trends is because you have poor parents who never learned how to be successful in life and who just moved off the government who blamed and, and, and ex basically uh, scapegoats and, and just provided excuses for their failure. They teach these same values to their kids and then the kids end up copying them and successful parents um, teach their kids how they became successful and then the kids copy those and uh, those ways and emulate them, at least in general, some individuals choose not to, and th these are the exceptions, and this is why they, they fail, and so it's not perfect, but um, those who do choose to emulate them, or emulate the successful, end up becoming successful themselves, um, and this is true on RuneScape too, I mean, everyone I see that has become a top player in the game almost always was uh, surrounding themselves with other top players, and playing the game the way they did and, and adopting the culture and the values and all that stuff. And RuneScape kind of played a lot of uh, shape in my uh, current philosophy. Um, and, I mean, those who listen to noobs or follow noobs and play the game like the noobs do, they don't get as far just because they're listening to the wrong people and they're embracing the wrong ways. So you just got to live life the right way. You got to make the life, right life decisions. Don't go to college to get a philosophy degree or... or uh, uh, psychology degree or anthropology because none of these are gonna make you an income and uh, I'm uh, let's see what else sum this up I am very anti uh, anti-green anti-organic so Oregon was very much 
pot organic and all that that dominated the whole culture just organic everything um, hippie is like hippie central especially Eugene Oregon where I went to school and um, I had to get out of there and I needed a I had basically lived in a blue state my whole life I grew up in Rhode Island I was living in Oregon and uh, I had to change I had to uh, improve and so I uh, I left and I came to Texas to be around more people like me and I love Dallas Fort Worth. This area is amazing. Um absolutely amazing. Uh Yeah, it's just there's a lot of rich rich communities, uh affluent communities. Uh it's it's Christian and a lot of new luxury homes, big homes. Uh, conservative uh, politics. Um, I just, I just absolutely love it. Like just just to express the amount of wealth here. Like uh, there's uh, like a dozen cities, all with uh, median household income over a hundred thousand. Uh, South Lake is actually two hundred thousand. Um, and you have a uh, bunch of new homes being built, and these are all nice homes. Like in the Northeast, you just, you just can't even find homes of this quality here. And they're all affordable. Um, so, I, know, I, I just love the whole Dallas-Fort Worth area. Um, as for what's happening on my top screen here, I ran out of energy potions, so I gotta go buy more. And I am very close. I gotta remember what the prices were on this. Actually, probably buy. I'm buying an energy potion one, which is not what I want. Um, anyways, I'll work out, I'll figure out what's going on above up here in a moment. Um, but yeah, just, I, sorry about jumping around a lot, but I mean, I just want to kind of explain uh, how I developed uh, the ideas I developed and uh, probably left some things out. I'll probably remember afterwards and beat myself over the head for, for forgetting about it, but uh, yeah. <coughs> um, anyways, thanks for watching, and I look forward to hearing all of the hate and criticism and comments in my comments. So, thank you if you listen to this whole video, and uh, let's see. See what you guys all say. Bye-bye.